In Lesson 16, you will have introduced the concept of the mole. Sometimes students have a hard time grasping this concept, so we came up with this activity uh, to help you make it more concrete for them. To begin, what you'll need is, is there are just two cups, styrofoam cups, the periodic table of elements. Then you'll need some uh, a substance that's a very low density substance. Examples might be cotton balls like I have here. Packing peanuts also work well. And then you'll need another uh, substance which has a much greater density. Uh, and I've had some wheat berries here on hand so I've used that. You can use dried beans or any other sort of grain. Something that is very dense. Uh, sugar would work, it's a little messy, but you can sure use uh, granulated sugar for this activity. What you'll want to do first with your students is point out the correlation here that we're, we're working towards when we introduce the idea of the mole. Up to now we've been mainly looking at single atoms and talking about uh, the arrangement of electrons and so forth, their size and everything, but that's all been a single single atom. Uh, to make this all more practical, uh, we have to come up with some correlation, some way of look, talking about atoms and then how does someone uh, make use of that information on a much larger scale. Uh, for example, if we needed to, to get a certain amount of a chemical to react with another chemical to make some compounds, we can't go about counting atoms. If we know that this atom likes to bond with that one or this one likes to share its electrons with that atom, it's impossible to count out individual atoms. They're just way too tiny according to all these theories. So uh, there's a chemist by the name of Avogadro came up with this idea of the mole and he also came up with a number which tells us how many atoms are present in a mole of any substance. So Avogadro came up with this number that's called Avogadro's number which tells us the number of atoms present in a mole of any element. So if we look on our periodic table we can pick out say manganese. Manganese in one mole of manganese will have the same number of atoms as one mole of aluminum. One mole of aluminum will have the same as sodium. So any element on here if we have one mole of it, we've got the same number of atoms present. Now, the, the, kick, the kicker here is that not all moles weigh the same. We have the same number of atoms, but we have varying masses. And that's atomic mass, which we'll get to a little bit later in this activity. So to begin here, have your students uh, take one of their cups, and we're going to write all around it, one mole, one mole, one mole, one mole, all around the cup several times. Take the second cup and do the same. One mole, one mole, one mole, one mole. Okay? Now, on your board, if you have a place that you're showing your students your chalkboard or your dry erase board or your uh, flip chart, let's write down Avogadro's number. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, those are atoms. Right Now some students may not be familiar with the scientific notation where you have times 10 to the 23rd. So go ahead and write that out longhand. We'll see if we can fit it on our, uh, within the screen of my camera here. So we're 6.02 and when we say 10 to the 23rd, we have to put, if the decimal point starts right here, we've got to put that many zeros to make the, the longhand number of this shorthand method of scientific notation here. So if we start here, we're going to count 23 places or 23 zeros out here to the right. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So that's where our decimal point is going to end up, right there. So let's put our zeros back in here one at each place and one more right there okay so let's take off this little bottom thing here and we're gonna come back 
and we'll put some commas in here so it looks more like a number that we can read so there's thousands there's millions there's billions there's trillions quadrillions then some kind of aliens and then some other kind of aliens I don't even know but this is Avogadro's number there's this many atoms in one mole of any substance so we have these cups here now we're gonna pretend that when we fill up these cups these two styrofoam cups we're gonna have this many 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in that cup now your students need to know that this is kind of pretend situation uh, but this is makes it a little more concrete for them so let's get a mole of our lightweight or low density substance in this case uh, cotton balls and I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put my cotton balls in here and I'm gonna show my students I have one mole of cotton balls I have this many atoms of cotton balls okay now we're gonna take the other cup we're gonna do the same thing with the high density substance and in this case it's my wheat berries and I'm gonna carefully try to not make a big mess and pour those in there get in there and we're gonna get almost to the top the best we can alrighty get rid of my extras there alright so now we have another mole of this case our wheat berries and again since it's one mole of it we've got this many atoms of it 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms so in this mole we've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms this mole we've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms we have the same number of atoms we have one mole of each do they weigh the same no if we had a, a, a balance here we would put put them on the each side of the balance and boom it would go that way the atoms in each of these or the, the the atoms here in this mole each have more neutrons protons and electrons than the atoms in each of these over here there's the same number of atoms but there's more matter to each atom in this heavier one over here okay now let's take a look at the periodic table okay let's take a look at Oh, just lithium here, for example. Let me bring it up close to you here. Lithium has atomic number of three, has atomic mass at 6.9 something there. It's right at seven. Now, these numbers underneath, which are atomic mass, which you'll have been introducing to your student, tells you how many grams it takes of that substance to make one mole of that substance. All right, so if we're looking at lithium, if we needed to get one mole of lithium for our reaction in our experiment, whatever we're doing with it, if we need one mole, the recipe calls for one mole, we know we need to get right at seven grams of lithium. So if this was lithium here in the cup, to get one mole of it, we needed to get we need to weigh out seven grams of lithium. Let's look at another one here. Oh, let's just choose how about aluminum here? Aluminum aluminum which is atomic number 13 has an atomic mass value underneath there of right at 27 grams so if we if we had some aluminum and I've got some right here and we wanted one mole of aluminum we'd weigh out 27 grams of that aluminum if we want two moles of aluminum we just get 27 plus 27. 54 grams gives us two moles of aluminum. If we go back to the one mole situation, 27 grams is one mole, which is this many atoms. Okay, so we don't have to count atoms any longer. We just need to measure in moles. And because we can weigh out substances, because we can weigh them out, and here we've got a little kitchen scale because we can weigh out substances then we can get an idea how many grams we have okay so I, I just tossed this foil in here and 
it's oh it's just a tiny few grams we probably don't even have a whole mole of aluminum right here okay um, I've got another substance here that's a really dense substance these are some BBs that are used in BB guns and, and shooting sports type projects now let's pretend let's pretend that these BBs are actually made of lead that they're actually made of solid lead and if we put them on here we're going to pretend again we put them on here okay and if we read the gram scale here let's just kind of pretend we're going to cheat just a little bit and turn that scale back I don't I, you probably can't see, read it here but I'm going to say well look at that it's right at 207 grams we've got 207 grams of lead here let's look on our periodic table if we find lead PB right there ah look at that it says one mole of lead weighs 207 grams so if this really did weigh 207 grams we know in here we have 207 or we'd have one mole of lead or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of lead in this container. So before you leave this activity, there are two points that you need to make, your, make sure your students are crystal clear with. The first is that no matter which element you're looking at, no matter which element you're referring to on the periodic table, if you have one mole of that element, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of it doesn't matter one mole is that many atoms so that's your relationship there uh, between moles and atoms and then the second point is that your students need to understand is not all moles weigh the same not all moles weigh the same uh, the atomic mass number which is that decimal number uh, down beneath the name of the element in this on this periodic table tells you the number of grams it takes in order to get one mole of that substance. If you can weigh out that many grams, like for potassium, here it's 39 point something grams. If you can get 39 grams of it, you'll have approximately one mole, which represents this many atoms of potassium. So we no longer have to count out individual atoms or even attempt to uh, try to. We have this relationship now that takes us from atoms to moles and then into grams.